Today, we're gonna take another look at Gen X, so stay tuned. A few weeks ago, I got a call from a group that wanted to interview me to talk about Gen X. They said that they had looked at almost 100 other people, but they decided on me because of all of my videos on YouTube, because I love you, Gen X. So I got really excited. They wanted to learn about Gen X today, but I had to take them back a little bit. So let me take you back to what we talked about when we were first talking about Gen X. First of all, when were they born? They were born between the years 1965 and 1979. Yeah, they're in their 50s, some of them right now. They're getting old. Um, this, was a, this was a generation that was highly independent. They were very adaptive, determined. They had strong survival skills, and they were skeptical. Yeah, we'll get into that skeptical piece a little bit later. All of this came about because they were left home alone. This generation was called, by baby boomers, the latchkey kids. Yeah, it's not a great name, but the latchkey kids were because they used to wear keys around their neck to get into the house, the latchkey kids, yeah. The reason that they were called this is because back then, many, many moms, single moms, because they'd gone through a divorce, were, were working and they couldn't be home with the kids. And if moms weren't working back in the late 70s and the 80s and even into the 90s, moms were feeling that hell and ready, hear me roar, yeah, they went back to work. So moms were busy, parents were busy, and these kids were left alone. They were highly independent because they didn't have their parents to rely on. I'm gonna say that one again. They were highly independent because they didn't have their parents to rely on. This may be the last generation where they were not depending on their parents. When we talk about millennials and Gen Z, as we'll do later on, you'll hear why. So they grew up, they grew up hard workers, they grew up highly independent, and they grew up autonomous. They liked their freedom. They wanted to control their lives and they wanted to control their work and themselves. And today, right now, Guess what? They're the leaders. Did you know that in the United States, 62% of all US CEOs are Gen X? And in the world, the number is 51%. So yeah, they're leaders. There are people like Elon Musk, like Jeff Bezos, Lori Grenier, Sarah Blakely. You've seen them on the Shark Tank. How about Damon John? And last of all, we've got Bethany Frankel. Bethany's got her own show right now. Gen Xers are now into the CEO range and they are leading well. Gen Xers are the ones that are responsible for Google, Amazon, and YouTube, just to name a few. So this is an interesting group because they have strong survival skills, as I said before. They survived the global financial crisis of 2008. Some call it the Great Recession. And how about that dot-com bust? This is when many of them were just getting jobs in the, in the industry, and the bust came about between 1995 and 2000. So what we know about this generation is that they're resilient. They're very resilient. They're known for their ability to problem solve, they're innovative, they're creative, and they're highly flexible. And today in this workforce, we think that the number one skill that all managers and leaders need is flexibility. People are wanting their own schedules right now. Things are changing and this flexibility is key. So this is a generation that we are hoping is inspiring others, other generations like millennials and Gen Z because they're critical thinkers. This is a generation that understands failure. I'm gonna say it again. They're a generation that understands failure and you can't have innovation without failure. They are called the generation of positive skepticism. So remember when I said they were skeptical way back in the 80s? Yeah, yeah, they were, and they still are. But they put a positivity spin on this skepticism, and that's really great for leaders and CEOs. This is a generation that's very responsible for money, they're saviors, and they value education. So the biggest challenge today for Gen X relating to younger generations is their communication style. I heard that Gen Zs are kind of afraid of Gen X. They really don't want them for their managers or leaders. And it's because of this communication style that is very direct. They're frank, they're honest. We might even call them a little bit blunt. But this is a generation that understands failure and they're forgiving. They're forgiving if you do the work. They're highly productive and they don't care where you work. You can work anywhere as long as you get the work done, you get it done right and get it done on time. 
So this is a generation right now that is really leading the way. They have a unique perspective. And I want you to think about this as I'm closing it down. One of the reasons why they're so unique is because they understand both the world before technology, before digital, we call it analog, and they understand the world of digital. So they're the bridge. And they are the bridge that we hope can bring the younger generations to the workplace, happy, succeed, and move on. Thanks, Gen X. I love talking about you. Hey, if any of you have any comments on Gen X, I'd love for you to put them in the, in the comment section so we can keep this conversation going. I'll talk to you later. It's Karen McCullough with another Lesson from the Road.